Hello, Tile friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Tile Money Podcast. My name is Luke Miller, and I am a tile contractor here in the state of California. Now, Tile Money Podcast is brought to you by the National Tile Contractors Association and is sponsored by Lady Creek International. I love discussing the business of tile installation, and it is my sincere hope that I'm helping you uh, look at your business in new ways and think of it in a positive way and continue to grow and strengthen your business and run profitable, sustainable businesses that will last the test of time. So I've got another great interview um, with somebody that I've actually been listening to for a couple years now. He has his own podcast called The Protractor Podcast, and his name is Martin Holson. And maybe you listen to him too. I recommend it as a podcast. Um, he interviews great contractors and discusses the business of being a, a contractor in general. So we get into his specialty, which is websites and lead generation. And this is a great follow-up uh, episode to the Ben Santos because we we dive into some topics that we didn't cover with Ben, and I know you're going to enjoy this. So without further ado, friends, enjoy this episode. How are you today, Martin? Thank you for being here. Great. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm excited to have you here. It's a little bit unreal for me because you've inspired me along the way to start what I'm doing with Tile Money. So thank you again. My pleasure. Thank you. So we're going to get into some of the marketing um, topics and contractor topics and get into the business topics. But before we do that, I always like to ask um, some personal questions or a personal question. What do you have? Do you have any hobbies that you like to enjoy in your free time? I do. I have a few, but one of them I thought you might find interesting is that I love to roast my own coffee. Okay. Yeah, so that started a few years back. Um, my dad and mom were out visiting us, and he had done some work for – he's a contractor, and he had done some work for a client, and she, and her husband passed away. And so she was just like, you know, take a look around. If there's anything that you find interesting, you know, you're welcome to it. And he found these – bags of green raw coffee beans and a, a hot air popcorn popper and she's like oh yeah he used to roast his own coffee so he came out here to visit us and he thought i'm just going to bring that stuff with me and we'll try you know we'll do some or some youtube videos and see how to do this thing and so out here in my shop we we tried it you know the first few batches were either burnt or not done enough but <laughs> kind of got the hang of it yeah and man that was i don't know probably three or four years ago and i've been doing it ever since and it's it spo has spoiled me to where i don't really like to buy coffee anymore i'd rather roast it and have my own so that's now cool. I, I used to use a hot air popcorn popper and now i've uh my friend showed me how to take a uh bread maker and yeah. um so i use I've, i have a couple different heat sources in the top and so that's one of my hobbies for sure is roasting my own coffee. That's really cool, Martin. Um, thanks for sharing. Do you, so is it just for yourself and, and family and friends or? Yep. Yeah. I have had, of course, as an entrepreneur, I'm always thinking, man, I could, you know, in fact, even for a while on my Instagram stories, I would say, you know, show a picture of the coffee and say something about protractor blend, you know, and yeah. uh, maybe wet people's appetite. Like, Hey, I want some too, but it's, it's enough work that you either have to like gear up and, and go into it or else keep it as a hobby. And that's what I've decided to do is keep it as a hobby for now. And if we, you know, if I'm feeling extra generous and, and I don't mean as far as giving away coffee, but with my yeah. time, because it takes time yeah. to get out there and roast some extra and, and then I can give it as gifts. But um, for now, it's just a hobby that I enjoy doing. That's cool. That's really cool. And I thought I was extreme. Uh, I grind my own coffee beans. <laughs> for the French press. I definitely grind my own coffee beans. Oh, I mean, I mean a hand grinder. Oh, okay. Hand yeah, by so, hand. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Right on. That's cool. Well, I'd love to sit down one day. It'll be a goal of mine and, and have a cup of coffee with you. Sweet. Let's do it. That sounds great. Right on. So I know you were a contractor uh, before you started this media and podcasting 
business. Can you tell us a little bit about your, your contractor experience? Yeah. So like I said, my dad is a contractor still Mm -hmm. and he's pretty much been in the home improvement space all of his or all of my life. Um, you know, home remodels, additions, he's good at additions, stuff like that where he doesn't have to keep a full crew busy all the time like you would on building new homes all you know so that's kind of been his bread and butter but his dad was a track home builder so he would build you know when my dad was growing up he was framing a house i don't know how many houses per week or whatever i don't remember those stats but um so it's in my blood i definitely grew up working in a wood shop um, going to the work, going to work with my dad in high school. I didn't think I wanted to do this, Yeah, but I didn't want to go to college either because I didn't know what I wanted to commit to. And I saw college as a commitment. I don't think everybody sees it that way, but in my mind, it was like, if I'm going to get a degree, that's what I've got to be. And I don't know what I want to be. So I yeah. didn't go and then just, um, had you know worked for my dad or other con- you know i've worked in cabinet shops i've worked i've had a lot of different jobs in the construction industry and then after we got married um uh it wasn't too long after we were married that i i started my own remodeling company and okay. it was sort of put on me i mean i was working at an another you know business it wasn't in the construction industry but that was not for me, I could, I, my heart was not in it. I wasn't happy. So I, I quit that and started my own business just out of necessity. And man, I fell in love with it. I, you know, over time, I realized that I really enjoy this working with the client, helping them realize their dream. Well, you know, small stuff, it was home improvement stuff. Yeah. But, um, but that was fun. And then another thing that really surprised me, this was my first time as an entrepreneur doing my own, you know, growing a business. And I really enjoyed that aspect of it. I didn't really know that about myself till I was in it. Like, Hey, I, I like, I enjoy this, you know, business side of business. Yeah. And so yeah. there was that. And then, and that was in 2004 and I, you know, just continued to grow that company till 2009. And then we moved overseas as missionaries and lived overseas for, three and a half years in Thailand mm-hmm. and it was, I, we actually sold everything because I thought um, that that was our calling for, you know, long term. Yeah. And, and it had been a dream of mine for 10 years. And finally when the door opened and we were able to go, um, I sold my, all my tools and gave my um, leads to my right hand man who took, I basically started his own LLC and, and just, uh, kept going with it and uh, we moved over there and it, you know it was at the end uh, or about the three-year mark where I um, had some asthma and some you know sick you know issues with my health and I realized man we're not going to be able to stay so probably need to move back to the states and that's when I was like man what are we going to do for work so while we were over there is where I had studied blogging, um, how to make websites and and had kind of been learning that on the side as we were doing our mission work. And so in returning to the States, I was like, you know, I think I would rather have an online business than, uh, you know, a construction company that's tied down to our town because I still want to do more traveling in the future. So that's why I, I went into this industry or this, this type of business um, of online work was with the goal of eventually being able to do more travel while still running a business. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. It's, it's so encouraging and, um, and, and good to hear that you followed your dream and were able to do, you know, pursue that passion and that desire to move somewhere and help out um, like that. And, I remember you talking or maybe I read about it in your bio um, when you were studying about this online stuff, uh, marketing and websites that you didn't, (laughs) you even wondered like, why am I doing this? But 
what I thought was so cool is you were absorbing all that, all that knowledge and you, you weren't sure where it would lead. No. No. Oh yeah. I remember that. Well, it's, it was, well, I, I joined a network marketing company and okay. my, my idea was maybe I can earn a little extra cash Yeah. other than the donations that had came in to support us. Yeah. And so that's why I was studying marketing and it just felt like, you know, is that what missionaries are supposed to do? You know, just, I don't know. I just, I don't know why I had that, that paradigm in my head, but now I do. Now I know why, you know, it was, it was totally, um, it was like God was preparing me for what was ahead in my life. Yeah, I mean. for sure. Yeah. I love, I love that. I love collecting knowledge and reading and studying. And even if it's not for your industry, you just, mm -hmm. You know, you can typically apply it to whatever you're doing or, you know, in the future, there might be something. So I know, I know from listening and following you that you're always keeping up on the latest trends of marketing. So we want to dive into that. What do you think today in, in 2019 and the 21st century marketing really means? Marketing. Kind of a broad principles. Question. Yeah, no, marketing principles don't change okay because humans we're humans we're human beings and we respond to each other socially just the way we always have and so even though technology comes and technology goes and technology changes we still respond to each other in human social ways the same so that's when I say what I, and maybe I can make it even a little bit more clear what I mean, we, we like to buy from people that we know and mm -hmm. that we like and that we trust and trust is ultimately where we want to get to in our marketing, right? We need yeah. to be building a brand that eventually is, um, that a person that's following us or watching us or whatever in that, in, in that brand becomes trust, you know, the, the trust within them rises to the point where they're like, I know when I'm ready to build a house, that is the person I'm calling. Yeah. I know when I'm ready to redo my bathroom, that's the tile contractor I'm going to call. That's, that's branding to me. And, and that's getting them to, not just know about you, but like you and trust you. And the like part of the no like trust factor is the part where you're different from the other contractors out there. You are you. And yeah. so that's why we need to be authentic. We need to be who we really are, especially in online marketing. We need to be ourselves because what that's actually going to do is attract the right client to you because yeah. they like you. They're like, that's a person I can, for some reason I just identify with them and I like them. And I, I think we, I'd like to have that guy in my house for nine months or whatever, you know, it takes yeah. because it's a, the likability and then the trust, obviously, you know, and, and that's, that's based on things like integrity yeah. and other factors that, well, and, and then also that, you know, like, you know what you're talking about. And that comes by presenting your work and showing that you know how to do your work and all those kinds of things raise trust. So your question was about 21st century, and I'm not answering your question, but what I'm trying to show is that whether we're doing marketing online or down at the coffee shop with a few people or newspaper or whatever it is, the goal should be showing what you do, presenting yourself in a way that people will find out about you and also learn to like you and then ultimately trust you and you'll be the one that they call. Nice. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that a lot. The principles don't change. We, we have to make that human connection. And in your book, um, you painted a beautiful picture of, of two gentlemen uh, talking over the fence, you know, maybe in the 80s or could have even been in the nineties, you know, back before all this social media stuff. Right. Yeah. And, and they were saying, you know, I, I just recently had a contractor in my house and 
that it went two ways. Either he did a really good job or he did a really a poor job. Yeah. And I think you related it to now that conversation typically isn't taking place on the over the fence anymore. It's taking place um, where like where like Instagram, Yelp, Google, you know, Google reviews, all these places where people hang out now online. So I, I think I think that, you know, what I take away is is we need to we need to get back to the basics but get to know where our customers are. Is that, is that true? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, man, when, um, you know, in, in that situation, you've got a customer or w let me say it like this, a con mo many contractors, I'm not going to say all of them, but many like to pat themselves on the shoulder with one or two hands and say, you know, I don't do any advertising. I don't do any marketing at all, word of mouth. Yeah. Well, hey, we're living in the 21st century now when our lives are out like an open book. If you're online, if you are active on social media, online. So to make that claim, I'm not, I, what I want to know is how can you prove that that word of mouth has nothing to do with what you're doing online. And I don't think you can because our lives are so, so intertwined now with what we're doing online. Yeah. So uh, I like to say that marketing by word of mouth is the absolute best way. And there, there isn't even an argument there. I don't, you know, I don't, I wouldn't even entertain an argument with that because yeah. you can't beat a neighbor that tells another neighbor that's the best person i had a great experience with no problems they showed up on time clean cut they did excellent work great fair price that's you know that's the best kind of marketing you can get however now with the millennials they are going to their phones and even if if their mom tells them this is the best contractor in town and and they're still going to they're still going to look them up. They're going to Google and they're going to search and they're going to see what's this person like, you know, who who do we have any common friends on Facebook, you know, what's their Instagram page look like? And so that word of mouth now becomes a much broader type of marketing if that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It makes a lot of sense. Um, I know even if someone recommends like a restaurant to me, I always check, I'm a big Yelp. I'm a big Yelper. So I always check Yelp to make sure that, that that's, you know, I've, I've got multiple sources of references at that point. Yeah, for sure. Wow. It's a small investment sometimes to go out to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of tile contractors are on Facebook. Um, can you give us any best practices for Facebook, you know, um, uh, contractor uh, business page? Yeah, post. Well, first of all, fill out your page fully, right? There's a lot of background information that needs to be filled in. So ver make sure it's verified for your local presence mm -hmm. and um, – Fill in, you know, your business description, your phone number, website, uh, get a few reviews on there and make sure that your business page, the, the structure of it is, is pretty solid, rock solid. I, I don't believe that Facebook has a hundred percent like graph that shows you when you're completely done. I don't remember, but I know LinkedIn does, you know, you can... You're just working at it until you reach that, okay, now your page is 100% optimized. But still, just go through each step in Facebook and make sure that you've, you've filled out as much information as you can because that's going to tell Facebook more about your business. Mm -hmm. And then from there, post consistently. Uh, post regularly and consistently on it so that anytime somebody comes and visits your page, they see that you're active. Because yeah. um, if you show up on somebody's business page and the last post was two years ago on August 3rd, they're going to be like, man, I, is this guy even still in business? I'm, I'm not sure. So 
Yeah. You know, it's just like any other social media or blogging or whatever. You've got to keep doing. And if you can't do one a day, then it, and it's only one a week, it makes sure that you stick to that schedule. So there's that. And then outside of that, I'd recommend maybe joining some local Facebook groups mm -hmm. and um, being a nice person in the group, like comment on other people's stuff and yeah. recommend other people's stuff. And then every now and then pitch your own uh, product as well. But uh, if you just hop in there once a week and pitch your own product and that's it, people might not appreciate that very much. Right on. Yeah. I appreciate those tips. Um, yeah. This social media stuff works so much better when we're active and, and consistent. Yeah. It seems right. Really. Yeah. How about uh, online reviews? Do you have any advice for, for getting online reviews and, and keeping up with that? You know, there seems to be so many different platforms now. I know. Yeah, there is. And which ones do you do first and all that? Um, I was just interviewing a guy recently who only has reviews on house. In fact, he doesn't even have any a website or anything. And, okay. And, but that's working really well for him because he was – he has like 27 five-star reviews on Hows, which wow, it's just the free uh, version of the account, but that keeps him up at the top compared yeah. to his local competitors. So that's cool. But that isn't really my uh, – because I teach contractor marketing, I'm like, no, I mean, that don't start there. Start with Google. Google is like the interstate, you know, the whole system the whole internet system is connected and yeah. houses is, is a city on the interstate, but you have the whole interstate that, you know, you want to start there. And so I, I would recommend starting with your Google local page or Google my business. And same thing as Facebook, fill that thing out, make sure you have it fully optimized, make sure that you have it claimed and verified that, you know, you're the owner of it. And then, um, get some reviews get some yeah. good reviews and basically it, it's i think it's fairly easy luke you know you finish a job and just say look we're trying to grow our online presence and yeah. um, would you mind leaving us a review on google and they're like well i don't know how to do that no problem just log into your gmail and search for luke miller's tile and you know i don't know the name of your company but sure. search for that close. and <laughs> and then um and leave me a review it doesn't, yeah. you know, and you don't need to tell them what to say or how many stars or whatever, but just leave me a review. And once you get, say, five on Google, then move to a different platform. But I really want to see you start with Google because that's, okay. you know, that's um, when it comes to online directories, that is. Yeah. Well, I, I like that advice because it can be really overwhelming to to sit down and gather up, you know, five or six or seven different places and, and be like, okay, now I got to ask, you know, my clients to, to review me. And it, you know, so, so I like that advice to just start somewhere. And once you get maybe half a dozen um, reviews, then move on to the next one and then build that one up and then move on to the next one. That's good advice. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. Appreciate that, it. Yeah. And can I just warn you not to paste reviews into these sites for instance you might someone might write a testimonial and send it to you in email and you're like man i wish i was on google so i'm going to copy it and paste go paste it on the google as if it was from them yeah and google smells that stuff a mile away and yeah. they will you know they'll ban your account or they'll hurt you they'll put you lower in the search results and so even though you think well i might outsmart them by I mean, I know people that will get post office boxes in other cities so that they can say I'm located in that city. Wow. But Google somehow Google knows all that. They their <laughs> algorithms are so smart they can sniff that stuff out and then penalize you for for that. So it's better if you're trying to build Google to go to your customer and say, Look, I'm trying to build Google. Would you please log in and give me a review on Google and let them do it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a fair warning. I appreciate you saying that. I, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes um, people look for shortcuts, but sometimes the shortcut is more work than the just doing the work. It can hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
Wow. So how about how about websites and blogging? You know, with with social media, I've heard you know some opposing views on on whether SEO and blogging is still relevant in 2019, or if we should just be focused on social media. What is your view on that? Yeah. So I'll I'll start with websites. Okay. Whether you have a blog or not, I am a firm believer that your website is of utmost importance to have if if you were to pick between should i have a website or should i have facebook mm -hmm. i would go with the website because you own it and you can control it and you can um you you can control it yeah i mean facebook yeah. they're always changing stuff you know they they might change something and what worked yesterday isn't working today or the worst case scenario is they say, whoops, you violated our terms. We're going to take your page down and you got to start all over. Same with Instagram. I mean, at one time it was easy to grow a big following on Instagram. It's not as easy now, but they could, you know, they could take your site down. So not only that, but Google likes websites. They don't like Instagram or Facebook. Google doesn't okay. like social media sites. Google likes your website. So if you have a website that is built right and optimized right for search, over time you're going to grow in um, authority and Google will rank you your website, not your Facebook page, not your Google or Instagram page, but your website. And so it's so important to me that contractors start there. Build your website just like building your home, your house. It's real estate, and you're building a little spot online that you you're like, okay, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna put my stake in here, and we're gonna raise a family here, and this is gonna be home base, and that's okay. your website. And you can add on later and build, and your your house can get bigger, and you can buy more land around it, and your property will grow, and the real estate that you have in 10 years will be worth way more because you've continued to grow that online presence, but you need to start with your website. And that's, that's my man that I just, I can't imagine contractors that, you know, do social media and, and they do fine and everything. And, um, but they don't even have a website and I don't fully understand that. I think it's because times are good and there's, there's plenty of work. And so they're, they don't really, need it they're more doing yeah. social media for fun but yeah. i look at you know did you how was it in the recession did you enjoy that you know like yeah. what if you were on page one in the next recession would that make yeah. a difference you know when yeah. people are searching and you're there it, right now times are really good and contractors are busy and so they're like well i don't need any more work but that's not a good excuse to not be building your online presence because you don't well first of all you don't know what's ahead in the future and second of all the more exposure you have online the more opportunity you have for the right customers to be finding you and eventually you might be picking and choosing your customers instead of just taking everything that comes your way yeah you know that's that's really that's really interesting that you brought that up um I know I, I have customers call me and they say, you know, especially now, you know, we're in, in spring of 2019. Um, and they say, you know, Luke, uh, thank you for calling us back. You know, you're like the sixth tile contract we've been trying to get a hold of. And I think people take for granted that the times right now are good and, and everybody's busy and that's great. But like you said, if you're not putting that foundation on, on your house now, you know, what's going to happen when things slow down, which inevitably they will. And I remember, you know, just speaking from personal experience back during the recession, my excuse was, well, I don't have the money. And I, I really didn't have the money for a website. Right. And then when things got really busy, I said, you know, I, I said, I'm too busy <laughs> to, to, to even like make a phone call and sit down with a website developer. <laughs> but eventually I did. <laughs> but it, it's just like one excuse after another, you know, but I, I really like that um, illustration about you know, building your foundation. And even if it's just one page with six pictures um, and a home page, you know, and then later you can always build up. And, and then further your question about SEO, I, mm -hmm. I do not believe it's dead. 
I believe it's just as alive and vital as, as ever. Okay. Right? Google is still the number one search engine. Yeah. People still search for stuff. See, social media is responsive, no, meaning I'm on social media just to chill out, going through my feed, see what's up. Oh, there's a pretty picture. Oh, okay, that's neat. I'm going to save it. What did I save it for? Oh, because someday I might want to do a kitchen remodel. I might want to build a deck on the back of my house, so I'm going to save that. It's very – oh, man, this guy – you know, I'm ready to build my deck. Yeah, I remember I've been seeing him in my feed. I think I'll give him a call. That's all very responsive. Okay. What about the the person who's been on Pinterest? They've been um, on Google Images and they've they have they've saved all these pictures and they have an idea now what they want and they're going to Google and they're searching for best tile contractor in Atlanta or you know they're 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 making an active search. Yeah, it's not going to be your social media that comes up. It's going to be whether you're on page one or not. That's that's the only thing that matters. And then once they do click on the the you know websites that show up on first page, they're going to do a quick assessment in their head subconsciously of which ones they like. The look, of, you know, does this yeah. website even look good to me? Man, this one looks like it was a 2010 model. They're way out of date. I don't even know if they're still in business anymore. Yeah. This website looks really nice. I think I'm going to go and check out some of their other stuff. And so, man, SEO is, is, is important. Even That's today. really. And it's not that hard, really. What, what are the best practices for SEO? Is it blogging or? Well, blogging is good, um, but it's not, it's not like, you know, it's easy to, um, to say, well, blogging is key. To SEO, but there's people that blog every week and they're still not on page one. So it's mm -hmm. not about blogging itself. Mm -hmm. It's more about the structure of how you've set up your website, first of all, the quality of content that's on there. And then like if you're going to be using blogging for SEO, then you've got to know how to do that. It's not just writing a blog post. It's about thinking through, you know, doing some keyword research beforehand and then strategically writing that blog post um, in such a way that it will rank. I mean, I I wrote one time a, a seven on-page SEO tips, and I'll just share those with you real quick. Um, yeah. Number one, this is just on-site stuff that you can do on your website. So you need to be the authority, first of all. Like uh, Google wants, as you probably know, Google has over 200 different factors that they take into account whether how they rank a website when you enter a search term. Okay. But but there's like four the main uh, the four ca um, factors that pertain to us as contractors the most, and one of those is authority, you know, and then there's location, and then there's like popularity. Mm -hmm. And things like that. So Google's looking, okay, do you know, are you an authority? Is this website an authority on this search term that somebody just entered? Yeah. And so if you're a tile contractor, your website better be about tile because if it's about lawn care, then you're not going to rank for tile keywords. I know this is basic and elementary, but yeah. I'm, I'm trying to make the point that your website should be an authority on your subject. Yeah. And then... You want to use the keywords in the title mm -hmm. of your website. So tile contractor would be a great keyword to yeah. try to rank for um, in your website. And then in the URL, you can also add the keyword in your URL. This would be more for like uh, an internal page probably. Um, mm -hmm. If you could get it in your root domain, like um, – uh, AtlantaOutContractor.com, yeah. you're going to rank for that most likely. I mean, because Google's going to say, well, hey, the the root domain is Tile Contractor, and somebody's searching for Tile Contractor in Atlanta. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not going to promise that you'll rank for that, but that's a very strong indicator that this website is about Atlanta Tile Contractors. Yeah. Yeah, for all you tile contractors listening, I would I would do a quick search on maybe like GoDaddy or something like that. 
and, and just say your, your, the name of your city, tile contractor. And if it's available for like $10 or whatever, I would buy it up. <laughs> totally. Yeah, totally. And then you can even point that one to your website. Mm -hmm. Okay. If, if it's not your, if you already have a website. Yeah. Yeah. If like, if it's Luke's tile.com, mm -hmm. you can buy Atlanta tile contractor.com and point it to Luke's tile. And, yeah. and, and that still will hold some of that SEO juice. Yeah. But what I was, what I was talking about with the URLs is say you have a internal page that's called Atlanta tile contractor or best Atlanta, whatever. Yeah. That's in the URL, and when they open the page, then you have a, a whole page of content describing what you do in Atlanta for tile, you know, and yeah. then Google is able to to rank that for you. So the fourth tip would be to set the alt tag of your images to include the keyword. So, I mean, when you upload a picture, usually you have your title and a caption, and then they'll um, let you enter an alt, alternate text, and you can add the keyword there if it's not already in the title. Okay. And then another tip would be to use your keyword throughout the body of the page. So if your page is, um, let's just say it's your home page. I mean, you want to have tile contractor throughout that mm -hmm. home page, but not in a spammy way. It needs to be very natural. Yeah. Okay. And then use keywords in your subheadings as well. So Google looks at the the main heading, but then it also looks and says, what are the other the subheadings about? And if you can enter your keyword into some of those subheadings, that'll give it a, a little stronger signal. Okay. And then finally, you can add your keywords to your meta description too. If you have a like a plugin that will help you know what um, you you know to change the meta description of your page, then you can. You can add it there too. So okay. those are just like some on-site tips uh, yeah. for SEO, and then off-site would be um, making just like we talked about your Facebook business page and your Google business page. Mm -hmm. There are, I mean, I think we've compiled a list of nearly two hundred online directories that relate to the contractor industry. Wow. And we go in manually every month for our customers and up you know, manually add the name, address, phone number, website, business wow. description, so that that directory has a solid, accurate listing. It's kind of like the old school yellow pages yeah. where what if you're in the yellow pages, but they got your phone number wrong. Oh, yeah. bummer, right? Because, yeah. you know, thousands of people in this area get the yellow page, but the phone number got wrong. Yeah, that's, a, that's called an inaccurate listing. And so online, there's all these directories out there, and they're just listing services. That's all they are. Um, Yelp, Google, Bing, Yahoo, Yellow Pages, Super Pages, what, all those are just online directories. But you need to go in and manually optimize your listing. And yeah. so there's a process for that. Claim it, and, and then you may have to go through a verification process. A lot of them are pretty easy, but yeah. then, you know, log, make sure that your address is right. Remember, you started with Google. Google's the the main thing. Google's the interstate. You know, it's it's everything. The, but um, and Google's going to be measuring your what does your website say say about where you're located? Now, what is what do your Google My Business page saying about where you're located? So if all these other directories have your address wrong, then it's a confusion online. It's like confusing. But if you get that all cleaned up and they're all saying the same thing, that to me is what a rock solid online presence is, is you're, you are, and that to me starts before social media posting. Social media is fun. You get a immediate response. People yeah. like your picture. They comment on it and that feels good. But if you have this confusion going on around your business, Get that yeah. stuff cleaned up, you know, clean up, build your online presence up and then do the fun stuff that starts drawing traffic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so, sounds like a really solid advice. Um, I recognize some of it. Um, I researched some of it, but a lot of it went over my head. So, <laughs> but 
but I'll have to keep, keep doing the research and, and maybe, you know, reach out to you for some, maybe some business here in the future for my tile money website. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. So, um, let's see now we covered SEO blogging. Cause I know a lot of, a lot of, uh, tile contractors are blogging. So, so I think they're going to continue doing that. And I know you, yeah, and I didn't really give that a, much um what i would recommend for tile contractors who blog is giving your readers a glimpse into your life and into your work um and and the like if you do it for seo reasons it might it might start feeling spammy or mm -hmm. it might not feel like it, like someone might read it and then never come back to your website Okay. But if you do it in so, in a way that um kind of like doing stories on Instagram where it's sort of a personal authentic approach like uh people often ask me what's the difference between a porcelain tile and a whatever. And and so that's what this blog post is about. I'm going yeah. to show you the difference and some of my thoughts on both versus and then you know so it becomes a more interesting blog post that's helpful rather than yeah. just trying to get some SEO juice or something. I love that you said that. Um, thank you. You know, I was talking to a tile contractor here within the last few weeks and just yesterday or the day before he had shared with me his recent blog post. And I sat down in one setting and read the whole thing, which is quite a feat. And the reason, um, you know, I did it and it held my attention was because it was personal mm -hmm. and it was vulnerable. And he said, this is the first post I've made about me. And it was about his work, his being a tile contractor, but had a lot of personal um, information in there. So I said, you know what? I think, I think you're onto something here, you know, c keep it up. Would you say being vulnerable is, is, is what you're talking about? Yeah. That's yeah. not easy to do. I mean, yeah. even, you know, just on this, as we're interviewing, you know, talking, it's, it's hard to be vulnerable when you know people are, listening or watching or whatever yeah. but the flip side of that is when we're real and transparent that trust level just goes up and and also like in in your buddy's case you read the whole thing because it caught you know your your attention was there like hey this is this is actually interesting yeah you know? and so you wanted to read it and yeah. that's to me that would be a good goal to shoot for is I want my readers to finish my posts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I know that helps. Uh, speaking of the SEO stuff and the organic, I know that helps with Google. Like they pay attention to how long someone stays on one page. That's true. <clears throat> mm -hmm. That is true. And then, and then I like that you brought it back to the trust, the original thing, no like and trust. So how about video? Do you have any thoughts on, on making videos and tips on, you know, getting videos that get watched? There's a lot of tile guys on, on YouTube nowadays. That's great. Um, I don't have a lot of personal experience. I do some video myself, okay. but what I see, what I, what I've observed and watched is contractors who grow, their you know they their followings are really growing are usually people like, just like we were describing okay people that are just open and transparent they're not putting on a show they're just like hey guys this is me and they're and um they're showing they're giving a lot of value right they're sh they're not just in it for the entertainment's sake but also giving actual value that that people can take now tile I don't know um, if it, I, yeah, I do know. Tile is, is like, there are so many homeowners that want to know how to do it. Like it's a, yeah. such a DIY hungry industry. Yeah. You know, a lot of people want to try doing it themselves. So as a tile pro, a tile contractor, you might be tempted to say, well, I don't want to share all my secrets. Then I won't get the phone call. I won't get the lead. Yeah. But the more you put yourself out there and show those nitty gritty secrets that other tile contractors would want to steal, yeah. man, your authority will go up. Yeah. Because now all of a sudden you've raised your hand and said, God, you know, 
I'm the professional in the room, basically. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm the one that knows because I'm showing all these never before seen secrets. Yeah. So to speak, you know, with air quotes, because um, who else wants to do that? But if you start doing that, there will be almost guarantee it. There will be DIY homeowners that watch that and finally say, you know what? I'm not, uh, I'm not going, I'm just going to call this guy. <laughs> I love it. And have them do it. It's and so they, true, Mark. And I've had homeowners call me and they say, we tore our bathroom out a year ago and had good intentions and they have all the DIY materials, you know? And they say, can you use these materials and build us a shower? You know, <laughs> I'm like, sure. <laughs> no, the bummer. <laughs> here, here's the price. <laughs> right. And then as far as um, practical, tactical tips, something I, I, I follow a deck builder online and he's always posting these time-lapse videos. So you see mm. a backyard with nothing and then a flurry of activity. And then a, at the end of the video is a full deck built. And so it's a long time-lapse video. And I think tile could be done that way too. The problem yeah. with those is, they're cute and they're fun, but I don't know if I would just watch that over and over and over if I was a homeowner. Like what I mean is each, each bathroom you do is a time-lapse. Oh, I, I think see. it needs to be mixed up. Yeah. But I do think that time-lapse is a, is a smart thing because you see the tile guy go out to a saw and then he comes back and then he goes out and then he comes back. And yeah. then all of a sudden, you know, the shower is, is complete with yeah. a niche, you know, and everything. Yeah. So time-lapses are cool, but then, um, probably in my mind, even more important would be the authenticity and vener, uh, vulnerability that you were talking about. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Mix it up, keep it fresh. Mm -hmm. Um, that makes a lot of sense. So it's, it's similar to the blogging and, and things of that nature. We right. haven't talked about Instagram, but mm -hmm. I would encourage tile contractors on their feed to post high quality pictures of detailed tile work. Mm -hmm. show off your tile skills, your be be most beautiful work in your feed. And then in your stories, do videos showing behind the scenes Yeah, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. Like, hey, today I'm, yep, back on the shower job again today. Yesterday we had a leak and yeah, this is how we fixed it. And now here's what I'm doing. And that's, that is, that is building trust. Yeah, because it's showing authenticity. But on your feed, you have homeowners that are visiting you for the first time. Yeah. And the impression that you make is I have a feed full of beautiful pictures of tile. And now, if you show a picture of your finger that's bleed, you know, you got a cut and it's bleeding and a homeowner comes for the first time and that's what she sees, it might be like, that isn't really what I came to look for. I was looking for, you know, beautiful tile work. Yeah. So there, but you can do that and you can show that in your story. Yeah. So show more I, personality, more, have more fun, be more vulnerable in your stories. That's, right. That, yeah. Do yeah. that. But on your feed, make it professional because that's the pictures people are going to be saving into their little bathroom re renovation file. Yeah. And that goes for other social media accounts too. But I think Instagram is a place where people go for expecting to see good quality photo work. Yeah. And then once they follow you, they might start watching your stories and yeah. seeing that personality. Yeah. Right on. Great advice there. Um, yeah. Thank you for bringing Instagram up. There's so many tile installers on Instagram. It makes sense. You know, it's a visual, it's a visual trade, finished trade. So well, I, I truly appreciate um, your time here, Martin, and I've enjoyed interviewing you. Did we skip anything that I, all right. So, well, I mean, I love talking about marketing, so we yeah. could go on for hours, I'm sure. Well, I, I think what we'll do is we'll schedule another one if, if you're okay with that. <laughs> yeah. And now where can people find you? And do you have a website or a Facebook or how, where do you want to give a shout out for your business? Yeah. So it's like if um, I'm giving away my book, Contractor Marketing Simplified to okay. people in the USA for free. So, you know, if people want to get a copy of that, um, I just ask that they help with shipping and handling. And that's that can be done at contractormarketingsimplified.com. That's that's where they can get the book or 
um, if they're you know located in other countries, it's on Amazon. But um, protractorpodcast.com is our podcast website, and then my website is martinholsinger.com. Okay. And Instagram is Martin Holsinger, and then our our podcast is at Protractor Podcast on Instagram. All right. Thank you, Martin. And um, I'll make sure to send those links in the show notes, friends. So um, I'll get those links from Martin and make sure to pass them along here within the next few days. All right, Martin. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you again for, for being on here. Tile friends, I want to encourage you to keep, uh, keep up the good fight and keep, keep being profitable and running um, responsible businesses out there. All right. Take care, Martin. Thank you. Pleasure's all mine.